Hey guys, how's it going? It's Brian for GumballTech.com again, and today I'm going to be showing you my jailbroken iPhone 4 running iOS 4.1. It was jailbroken a couple days ago with Lime Rain, and basically I'm going to show you all the jailbroken mods, hacks, and applications that I have installed through Cydia. So, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about Lime Rain because I've been getting asked a lot lately whether or not my iPhone 4 is acting normal a couple days after I've used Lime Rain. And the answer is I've had absolutely no problems after using Lime Rain. I've been jailbroken for about three days now and everything is running normally. Uh, I haven't seen anything weird happening or any errors or anything like that. So on to the primary video. Uh, so I'm going to start with the lock screen first like I usually do with these sorts of videos. And as usual I'm using lock info. Uh, it lets you view a bunch of different information on your lock screen at the same time like unread mail, calendar events, uh, various push notifications, text messages, missed calls, voicemails. You could also view your Twitter stream if you'd like. Uh, okay, just reading a couple of those. Anyway, you could also make a tweet right from your lock screen. You could also reply to somebody's tweet from your lock screen. So it's pretty cool and there's a lot, to di and there's a lot of different things you can do. And up here we have a custom clock and weather widget. You could also tap on it and it shows you the uh, s a six day forecast. Or I guess seven days if you... Yeah, it is six days. So you could do that as well. Uh, if you've seen my previous video like this, I was using the HTC lock weather plugin. And, you know, it's nice and it's cool, but it just doesn't really fit in with anything else iOS related. So I'm using this one and it looks nice and you could also refresh the weather you'd like. There's also different intervals you could set like one hours or two hours, uh, five minutes and things like that. And over at the bottom you can see that I'm using the tap to unlock. And in the status bar you can see that I'm using a custom AT&T logo that does not require Winterboard which is always a good thing because Winterboard's a memory hog. And here we are at my home screen. I am using a theme. It's called Glass Glart HD. I'm just going to go ahead and open up Winterboard real quick and show you, um, you know, the lists and stuff. So here's all the Glass Glart stuff. Uh, interesting name. I still haven't figured out where he got the name of this theme from. So there's a bunch of different options you can choose from for this particular theme. And you can see that I'm also using the tap to unlock and the white icon labels because Winterboard does seem to... Um, like after, right after you install Winterboard, your icon labels they turn gray for some reason. So I'm gonna wait for my phone to respring again. Okay, so we're back at my home screen, and of course I have SB settings. This is pretty much a necessity for anybody who jailbreaks. It basically, lets you turn various things on and off from whatever you, from wherever you like, like brightness, 3G, 3G on restrictor. Well, that I'll get to in a moment. Uh, Wi-Fi, things like that. Uh, you also get IP address information, available memory, things like that. Yeah, my IP address is here, but you can't do anything with it anyway. And you could also refresh, you could add applications to the dock. Here I have a hidden application called iOS Diagnostics, which is new to 4.1, and you can't really do anything with it anyway. But anyway, um, you could also respring, or you could restart your phone, turn it off, lock your phone, go into safe mode, and you can cancel that out. And SB settings is free. And you could also I also have Q Tweeter as usual, and basically it lets you um, post to Facebook, Twitter, multiple Facebook and Twitter accounts at the same exact time. Uh, you could also add photos, videos, geolocation, and things like that. And what else? I have a mod called uh, No Spot, which basically disables the spotlight page, so if I try to swipe to the right, I can't go to the spotlight page at all. Even pressing the home button doesn't go there, so that's good. Because I've never used spotlight before, so I have absolutely no reason for it, so there you go. And I also got rid of the page dots at the bottom because I only have one page of applications, so it makes things a little bit neater. And what else? Going into my, well, first I'll show you some, I'll go into settings really quick. And here are 
settings for various jailbroken stuff like lock info, Safari download manager, which I'll get to in a moment, and Winterboard. This is the same thing as the application on your Springboard. And you could also see in my status bar that I have a little bell there with a line through it. That means my phone is in silent mode. Um, I believe lock info puts that there and there's usually a program called status notifier that does similar things but it doesn't work on iOS uh, 4 but anyway that's what puts the status bar icons up there and if you have unread text messages phone calls email there will also be icons up there as well so going into some other mods that are sort of hidden um, I have one called synchronicity and basically this lets you use your phone while you're syncing it with iTunes. So on my computer I have iTunes open and I'm going to do a quick a little quick change so that it starts to sync. And you can see at the top that it says iTunes sync is in progress. So, you know, it's definitely working and it's definitely a cool little cool little tweak. I think it's a dollar ninety nine in Cydia, but um, sometimes if you're doing long syncing if in if you'd still like to use your phone you could still do that. And what else? I'll go into Safari and I will show you Safari Download Manager really quick and this will basically lead into a couple other things. Um, so basically Safari Download Manager which is which I think is also two bucks it adds a new icon in your Safari's bottom bar and you know it, it's basically a download manager for Safari hence the name. So I'm gonna demonstrate this by go and I'm gonna go download a zip file um, by going to our files and I'll just get this one and you could add different extensions that you'd like to be able to download from uh, and when you try to download a file you get two different options for, or at least for zip files uh, if you try to download a PowerPoint or something it's gonna have a view option there and basically download two will bring up a window where you could navigate through the file system a little bit and you could choose the folder that you'd like to save the file in. So I'm going to go ahead and save this into downloads and you could also make a new folder if you'd like. So I'm just going to save it in downloads and then your download will begin to download and when you're done you could tap on the download and you get a couple extra options. You could delete the file or you could open it in iFile which I will do right now and this leads me to iFile and it immediately goes to the file that you downloaded and you could use whatever you'd like to mess with it so going into my jailbreak folder I'll show you iFile a little bit more um, of course you have Cydia which is what you primarily will use to install all this stuff and here we have iFile which is basically a file system file manager lets you browse through any folder you'd like you can mess with your files you can make a, a little web server if you'd like I mean there's just so many useful things for iFile and to me if you're gonna jailbreak your iPhone you, this is definitely something you'd like to have uh, Lime Rain is basically what the it's the program that you have to use to install Cydia um, now you, you usually you're able to un uninstall this application but in the first couple of betas for Lime Rain, it doesn't like there's some sort of bug that doesn't let you delete this so I just left it here um, I could get rid of it if I'd like by hiding it or deleting the blackrain.app in applications but you know the icon looks nice and it, I like it like I just like it in my jailbreak folder anyway uh, multitasking time this is pretty cool I've, I've just found out about this recently and basically it adds information to your multitasking dog so you can see here that it has a time and date, my battery, whether or not it's charging, and its percentage. And there are a couple customization options that you could give here. Uh, you could choose the location of the battery positions, um, location of the date, if you'd like to show the seconds and the, t and the, and the date. You could also show the Wi-Fi, the little Wi-Fi icon in the, in the left portion of multitasking time, so that's pretty cool. And of course we have MyY and this lets you 
turn your iPhone into a Wi-Fi hotspot so you could share your iPhone's internet connection with your computer or another iDevice if you like. And here we have the settings application for QTweeter. And Reminder is another application that lets you add the status bar icons to your status bar. Um, it works. It works for mail, missed calls, uh, instant messages through applications like Beehive and things like that. Uh, moving on, we have 3G Unrestrictor, which basically lets you use 3G on apps that require Wi-Fi. You could also FaceTime over 3G with this application, um, and with and you could choose the apps that you'd like to enable. And I have the App Store and the iTunes app here because usually you only get to download 20 megabytes worth of whatever through 3G, and this gets rid of that limit. And of course, we have Winterboard. And I believe that's all I got to show you guys. Um, let me see if there's any mobile substrate extensions that I need to show. Um, I think I went through everything. So that's about it. That was just a quick tour of all the jailbroken and mods, hacks, and applications that I have installed onto my iPhone 4. Um, I'll put a list in the description just in case you don't want to watch this entire video, even though we're already at the end anyway. But that's about it. Leave any comments or questions down below. Um, hope you found it useful. Some of these things are paid, some of these are free, but either way, most of them are worth it. And I'm just going to say that this does slow your phone down quite a bit. Um, having all of these things on at the same time definitely slow things down. And in a couple of days, I'm going to release a video comparing the speed of when all of your mobile substrate extensions are enabled and when they are all disabled. So be looking for that. It's going to be pretty interesting. So. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you like what you saw. So once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later.